This is part two of the invertebrate lectures. Um, and we left off with the phylum Rotifera, which contains organisms called rotifers. Rotifers are the first animals that we are learning about, first animal phyla, phylum, that has two openings, a mouth and an anus. And what we call that is a complete digestive tract. When there are two openings, we call that a complete digestive tract. Before, when there was just one, um, we called that an incomplete digestive tract. Complete digestive tract. Okay, and so what rotifers do is they are basically, they're predators. Um, well, no, they're not. They're not. They're not predators, they're filter feeders. This is a corona that basically spins and causes a vortex of water to enter into the, the mouth and um, it filters particles out of the water. Um, it does have a complete digestive tract, so no more gastrovascular cavity. Um, there's a cerebral ganglion, and that just means that there is a primitive brain. Um, and the foot and the toe help it to attach to structures. It does have a stomach and an intestine. And let me explain what this is. Um, basic, basically, a pseudocele is a almost a body cavity, but not quite. Um, a body cavity is called a coelom. We have a body cavity. We have three tissue layers, and we have a, a body cavity. So we're called coelomates. Um, the rotifers do not have a true coelom, they have a pseudo coelom, and this is misspelled, it should be E-U, T-S-E-U-D-O-C-O-E-L, um, but, um, but anyway, it just indicates another level of complexity. The rotifers have three tissue layers, but now they have a, um, a primitive body cavity, um, so we're going to be looking for, you know, our next um, uh, phyla, next group of animals to have a body cavity. Okay, um, now we are at the phylum Nemertia. You may have heard these called ribbon worms. Here, instead of a um, I think this is misspelled also. Hold on just a minute. Sorry for that. I just wanted to make sure this was uh, spelled correctly. Um, as you've probably noticed, there's often uh, misspellings in these slides, and I try to correct them when I can. But um, the ribbon worms have a um, mouth, and they have an anus, so they've got a complete digestive tract. They've got um, cerebral ganglion here and here, so that means, you know, like a primitive brain. They've got a lateral nerve cord like the platyhelminth, these are the flatworms. Um, they have the, the ronchocele is not a true coelom, but, but it's, it's, um, it is a, a primitive body cavity. So, kind of like the pseudocele in the rotifers. The proboscis is enclosed within the ronchocele. Um, the proboscis that, that is, resides within the ronchocele, um, it's hard to explain, but um, you know how when you put on a latex glove and then you take it off, the finger, um, the fingers of the glove kind of invert? Well, whenever the ribbon worms eat, when they feed, they're, they're predators and scavengers. So when they, they feed, um, they are carnivorous also. Um, their proboscis, which is located within this rhinco uh, seal here, inverts out of its body, kind of like, you know, the, the finger of a latex glove, um, and engulfs its food. This is 
um, uh, something I do want you to see, but you kind of have to copy and paste the link. Um, and I have already got it saved on here. Here it is. Okay. I just, um, I, for whatever reason, it was kind of random. I just started looking up the ribbon worms. I pers personally don't know that much about them, but there are um, apparently ribbon worms that produce toxins. Now, ribbon worms are aquatic, um, and they're mostly marine or saltwater, um, and they don't all produce toxins, but some of them do. And each of these dots represents an incidence of um, where a ribbon worm was found um, producing certain toxins. Now, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, now in North America, where you can see over on the, um, over on the um, Pacific, the Northern Pacific um, side of North America, you can see that um, the blue dots represent a certain type of toxin, and then the red dots represent another type of toxin. Um, I, I don't really remember uh, what type of toxin except for the yellow dots, and the yellow dots um, are actually tetrodotoxin, and tetrodotoxin is what you may have heard of um, that is produced by the blowfish, um, a fish called the blowfish, and it is deadly. Um, so anyway, there are three different types of toxins represented by the different colors of dots, and you can see that there, there's um, that there's kind of a pattern that the red, the the uh, ribbon worms that produce the red toxin seem to to be um, more northern, and then if you go down to South America, they they seem to be more southern, which means they're found in colder regions. There's one um, down here. Um, so they're found, the, the red poison is found in colder regions, it looks like. Now over here, Europe is just saturated with uh, ribbon worms that produce toxins. And then um, off the coast of China, um, these regions here in the Pacific Ocean, um, we have the ones that produce the tetra tetrodotoxin. So I'm going to go back to the notes now, but um, but that's what that link is. Now, moving on to the phylum mollusca. The phylum mollusca has three different classes that we will learn about. Mollusk means soft-bodied. And what you see here is a, a snail, um, which is in the, in the class um, gastropod. A mollusk, so now once we've gotten to this phylum, we have a true body cavity called a coelom. And so there are three tissue layers and a true body cavity called a coelom. And now how you look at animals is they're divided into protostomes and deuterostomes. The protostomes, when they're um, early in development, when their body is forming, the two openings have to form at separate times. The mouth forms at a different time than the anus. So in protostomes, the mouth forms first. In deuterostomes, the anus forms first. Um, the only deuterostomes are going to be the echinoderms, like the sea stars, and then the chordates. All of the chordates, which of course humans are um, in that, the phylum chordata, are deuterostomes. But mollusca are protostomes because the mouth forms first. Um, they have the three tissue layers. The mouth forms first. That makes them protostomes. And then they have a body cavity called a coelom. And you can see body systems in here. We even have a primitive heart, um, gills. For, so we've got respiratory. We've got uh, cardiovascular. We've got a digestive system with a crop, a stomach digestive glands, intestine, um, we have and, and, um, nerve cords, um, and then the radula is the kind of scrapes food. But um, this question says, what traits in the diagram does the aquatic gastropod share with other mollusks? 
and um, I just wanted to make sure that there was more slides about this. <laughs> but um, it's going to be the mantle and the visceral mass, which is inside of the coelom. The visceral mass is just the, the organs that are located inside the coelom and the foot. And most or a lot of mollusks have a shell, but they don't all have a shell. The mantle is the structure that produces the shell if, the, if that mollusk does have a shell. And then we've got the muscular foot in snails, which are gastropods. The foot is gastropod means stomach footed. And the foot is what is on in the, the region where you would think the stomach would be. And it moves on that muscular foot, you know, across surfaces. Um, and what was the other one that I said? The visceral mass. This just refers to your internal organs, your abdominal organs, and your um, your uh, heart and your lungs, all of those organs in your body cavity. So um, all mollusks have that. Uh, this is showing you how different mollusks develop. Their, their development is um, a development pattern called torsion. Um, And this is a this is showing a snail and the the um, pattern of its digestive system. Um, but I do want to add because there are not many slides, and I do want you to know the classes. So the snail is the only one we've seen, and that's in the class gastropod or gastropoda, which means stomach footed. Then we also have so that's one. Then we also have the class bivalvia, and that's going to be mollusks that have two shells, like clams and oysters. And then we have um, the class cephalopoda, and that means head-footed. And that's going to be your octopus, cuttlefish, squid. They're going to be in the class Cephalopoda. All right, now we're moving on to the phylum Annelida, which is the segmented worms. Earthworms are in this group. We have a specimen in the lab called a scale worm, which is also in this group. Um, so you can see that um, the there is um, nephridium, which are um, they're kind of like the the tubes, the tubules in our kidneys. So it's kind of like an excretory system. There is a ventral nerve cord. We have a dorsal nerve cord that runs along our back. The earthworm has a ventral nerve cord. Um, and it does have a um, highly developed cardiovascular system. It's got a ventral and a dorsal blood vessel, as well as several hearts up near its mouth. Um, there's not much else about the earthworm, but earthworms are in the phylum Annelida, and, and that does mean segmented worms. Okay, then we have the phylum Nematoda. More worms. These are round worms. Heart worms, pin worms, hook worms, parasitic worms. Um, they can also be, um, you can also have nematode infections in plants. So um, let's see what we have here. We've got, again, a complete digestive system, mouth and anus. We've got a ventral nerve and a dorsal nerve, not just the ventral nerve. If you look back at the annelid, it only had the ventral nerve cord. But now we've got in the nematodes, we've got ventral and dor dorsal nerve cord. Um, it does have a cuticle. It is in the um, class of organisms called ecdysozoans, which means they shed. It sheds its cuticle periodically. And then we will do the arthropods. Um, that will be our last section. Um, arthropods means jointed legs or jointed appendages. What you're looking at here is a horseshoe crab. And we'll talk about the insects. Um, the millipedes and the centipedes, the crustaceans, the chelicerates, and the echinoderms in the next section.